What's up everyone? John Render from Techno Buffalo with the full review for you of Verizon's latest flagship. This is the Droid DNA. This guy's packing a 1080p display, quad core, 2 gigs of RAM, Android 4.1 Jelly Bean, Beats Audio, and so much other goodness under its tiny little thin package. Let's go ahead and dig in and see if this is the super phone to grace your pockets for the next two years. As far as Android phones go, the Droid DNA's got it all. Good looks and specs to match. It's packed with the same killer 8 megapixel camera we saw on the HTC One X, the latest quad-core Snapdragon S4 Pro processor from Qualcomm, a wide-angle front-facing camera we saw on the HTC 8X, Beats Audio, 2 gigs RAM, and so much more. But it also has two hardware specs, one good and one great, which really stand out. First, it's got a crazy sharp 1080p HD display. First of its kind on the US market with a pixel per inch count of 440. That's sharper than any other smartphone you can currently buy. The phone only comes to 16 gigs of storage. That's fine if you're a cloud-based kind of person. Industry is certainly moving that way, but it's not that much storage. That's especially true if you actually want to take advantage of that gorgeous 1080p display by storing full HD videos on your phone. It seems really silly, but we learned that Verizon was the one who didn't want additional storage. So for whatever reason, can't take HTC for that hardware mishap. HTC has long built its Verizon Droid brand devices with the focus on making them look somewhat like sports cars, and DNA is really no different. It has a red racing stripe, mesh running down both sides, don't let that mislead you. Those are speaker grills for getting your jams on. There's also a red ring around the 8 megapixel camera, a red power button that's top of the phone, and a brushed aluminum volume button on the right side. There's also a 3.5mm headphone jack on top, making a small mini SIM port. The micro USB charging port is on the bottom, and the phone has a super annoying hatch protecting it. The device itself is built out of polycarbonate plastic and has a unibody design, which means it feels absolutely solid. Alright, so back to that 1080p display for a second. It is stellar. Text is noticeably much crisper than what I've seen on any other smartphone, especially when reading websites or books. It's also really bright easy to read on direct sunlight, since it utilizes LCD3 technology instead of Super AMOLED. Viewing angles totally rock, too. You can see the screen from nearly every angle with total ease. Lastly, there's a small looking grill on the back of the phone that's super hard to notice without looking for it. This is actually an LED indicator, although it's basically completely useless. I'm not sure why it was put on the back of the phone instead of on the front. It lights up green, but just barely bright enough to see when a new message, call, or email comes in. Again, no idea what HTC decided to put the LED notification where it is, but there you have it. Alright, I ran the full Quadrant benchmark, which we usually do for all high-end Android smartphones. See how the Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 processor stacked up against the competition. The Droid DNA received an overall score of, drumroll please, 7,461, which blew the HTC One X totally out of the water, bested the Asus Transformer Prime TF201, and several other devices. Keep in mind though that the quad-core processor has to be able to render every single pixel on display which really puts a toll on how well it stacks up against other quad-core phones. Basically, it looks like you're future-proofing yourself with the Droid DNA when it comes to more power-intensive apps and games that are no doubt going to launch in the coming year. Finally, before I forget, Droid DNA is a global smartphone and ships unlocked. That means you can actually pop in an AT&T SIM card and use HSPA in the United States, or even T-Mobile's Edge Network. You probably won't want to, especially if you buy it on contract, which lets you know the device is totally unlocked out of the box. Alright, so let's go ahead and jump over to software. Stop worrying about the upgrade from ice cream sandwich to jelly bean. The Droid DNA runs Android 4.1 right out of the box, which means you get buttery smooth performance, amazing Google Now support, and the option to use your voice for Google's pretty awesome Google search engine. HTC also slathered its own HTC Sense 4 Plus user interface, which has a few design tweaks over Sense 4.0 skin that launched on the One X. The keyboard has changed a bit, which takes some getting used to if you're already using an HTC phone, but it's still a breeze to type on. I also love that there's a settings button right on the notifications shade, which makes it easier to jump in and turn off GPS settings, connect to Wi-Fi network without having to dig through menus to get to them. Sense has really been one of our favorite Android skins. TouchWiz is great sometimes, but it's too colorful for me and seems too cartoonish. I like how Sense 4 Plus looks on this phone. Obviously others do too, since its weather widget has been widely copied on a ton of third-party apps. My big beef though with the current UI setup is that there's a small tab at the bottom right hand side of the main menu for Verizon apps. I suppose this is good for Verizon subscribers that are new to smartphones and don't know where their phone is capable of, but it's loaded with tons of bloatware including VZ Navigator and really good. It's time to kill VZ Navigator, you can get it for free uh, with Google Maps. MX Service, My Verizon Mobile, Verizon Tunes, Vivindi Game, a demo for Reign of Amira, Visual Voicemail, NFL Mobile, and a ton of other stuff you're probably not going to use. Sense 4 Plus also allows you to manage multiple photo galleries across third-party apps, which is pretty cool. You can view the files stored on your phone as well as those from Microsoft SkyDrive, Dropbox, Facebook, Flickr, and Picasa. Similarly, we also saw this in Sense 4. Beat Audio support is integrated with third-party music applications, such as Spotify, which appear under the music menu. 
All right, let's talk about camera. HTC really put a focus on camera quality when introduced the HTC One X, which remains my favorite mobile camera to date. Like that phone, the Droid DNA could snap photos in rapid fire, and I mean crazy stupid rapid fire. HTC said that it changed the default settings to save 20 pictures while snapping quickly instead of 99 because users were snapping so many photos so quickly they were consuming almost all their space. But you can always suggest that in the settings, however. I also love you can take pictures while recording videos. If you're at a baseball game trying to film a home run, you can quickly snap the shutter button to grab photos right as the batter swings. Pictures were pretty much on par with what we saw with HTC One X and the One X Plus. I generally think they're pretty close to what I received on the iPhone 5 too. Colors look great, flash doesn't blow too much image out, and the images look fantastic on the gorgeous 1080p screen. Likewise, the phone is capable of recording 1080p video, and for the first time, you can actually view it back in 1080p glory right on your smartphone, which is super awesome. All right, next, let's talk about call quality, data, and battery life. Calls on the Droid DNA were solid and what I've experienced with other HTC smartphones. I wasn't really blown away, but I didn't have any issues either. It works, it works well, no white noise, no drop calls. That's gonna depend on where you are, but if you're looking for a good phone, this will definitely do it for you. Uh, data speeds on Verizon's 4G LTE network were pretty solid. It usually fell around 15 megabits per second on the downside and close to 12 on the up. And those are crazy fast. Certainly it's gonna vary though again, depending on where you are. Droid DNA features a 2020 million power battery, which was able to get me to the end of the day with about 25 or 30% charge, which is pretty okay in my book, because I usually charge at the end of the day anyway. Again, it's pretty surprising considering the size of the screen and the amount of power that's under the hood. So what's the final verdict on the Droid DNA? We'd only got docked one point for lack of storage. And again, we can't ding HTC for that. That was on Verizon's end as they dictated the storage size. This phone is almost near perfect. With its killer specs, 1080p screen, you can finally view back the content as you filmed it. And this is expressed to me that it's kind of like watching Blu-ray on a laptop. Yeah, it looks great, but it still is a tiny screen. But at least you've got the option to view it on there. If you want to watch your video, on here you can it's going to be in 1080p or you can just pop it on a tv or any other format that you want to use it it's a really solid phone i can definitely recommend and it gets a very solid nine on the techno buffalo score if you want to get more tech news check us out at technobuffalo.com for the latest and greatest i'm john renger from techno buffalo I'll see you next video